Aww, animals. Who says you need wings to fly? Spiders may not have any wings, but it turns out all the eight-legged critters need to fly is a little charge. Spiders have been known to release long strands of silk to carry them up to 2.5 miles up in the air and over a thousand miles out to sea, a process known as ballooning. The common belief is that the strands catch onto the wind and help generate lift, but since it doesn't explain how spiders balloon even on days with light wind, another theory emerged, electrostatic repulsion. When spiders release their silk, it picks up a negative charge, which repels the Earth's similarly negatively charged surface and creates enough force to propel them into the air. A University of Bristol study tested the theory by putting the arachnids on vertical cardboard strips in a plastic box and then generated an artificial electric field. Sensory hairs on the spider's feet detected the charge and prompted them to start ballooning. They were able to take off despite no wind, but dropped when the electric field was turned off. While the study proved that spiders can fly using electricity alone, scientists believe air currents may still play a role in it. Previous studies have recorded the crawlers raising their front legs into the wind, possibly to determine how strong it is. Ooh, animals! Researchers discover angry octopuses turn darker colors. Scientists from the University of Sydney have discovered how octopuses communicate with each other by changing colors, including identifying certain poses that indicate a complex system of social signals that the marine creatures use to interact. After studying 53 hours of octopus footage, researchers concluded that the cephalopods turn a darker shade and try to make themselves appear larger or taller when they're being aggressive, and turn a lighter shade or make high contrast patterns when they're trying not to start trouble or if they just lost a fight. Darker octopuses will stand their ground when facing off with a lighter colored octopus. As you can see here, the octopus has taken a Nosferatu pose named after the vampire film. There goes the loser of the fight in a pale flash. This is the first study of a system of communication among fighting and high-fiving octopuses. In this clip, notice how the darker octopus chases the lighter ones away in a show of aggressive behavior. Octopuses have cells called chromatophores below the surface of their skin that allow them to change color. Lioness Sprouts Majestic Mane Vets at the Oklahoma Zoo were downright baffled after one of their female charges began to grow a very distinctly male feature. After spending 18 normal years as a fierce female, Bridget the African Lioness suddenly began sprouting a manly mane that by November had already resembled Santa's beard. Curiously, the luscious locks didn't seem to be contagious and hadn't come with any behavioral changes. Maned lionesses aren't unheard of, but usually the extra testosterone feeding the mane of glory also gives them increased aggression and male mating behaviors. In one case, a lioness named Emma's full mane growth was attributed to testosterone-producing ovaries, which then taken out caused the mane to disappear. Bridget's zoo has taken a blood sample to figure out if it's a testosterone issue, though it's also possible she has a benign tumor on the adrenal or pituitary gland. In any case, her handlers aren't too worried, since the extra hair doesn't seem to be affecting their big girl's health. Researchers in Norway teach horses to communicate with people. Researchers in Norway have made a breakthrough in the study of animal cognition, using symbols to help horses communicate their level of comfort to humans. In the study, 23 horses were exposed to a range of hot, cold and warm temperatures and given three symbol boards to select from based on what they experienced. If a horse nudged the board with the horizontal line, it communicated to the researchers the horse felt cold and was asking for its blanket. If a horse nudged the board with a vertical line, it communicated that it felt hot and wanted the blanket removed. If a horse nudged a board with no symbol on it, it was communicating it felt comfortable. Horses were given a carrot for making the correct choices. It was clear whether the horses were choosing the symbols that corresponded with their comfort as they were either covered in thick blankets designed to make them uncomfortably hot or taken outside in freezing cold temperatures which would call for them to demand a blanket. The horses learned to provide their preferences after only 14 days of 10 to 15 minutes of training each day. This new research groups horses in with apes, dolphins and pigeons as animals proven to be able to communicate with humans through symbols. Pesky humans. Like the dinosaurs millions of years ago, humans are now the planet's super predator. 
and it's driving all other wildlife to take the night shift. UC Berkeley researchers analyzed previous studies that captured the 24-hour movements of over 62 medium to large-bodied mammal species in six continents. They found that human disruption made animals 1.36 times more nocturnal on average, meaning those that typically split activities evenly between day and night became 68% more active at night. Human disturbance in this case wasn't just limited to destructive behavior. Even activities like hiking, farming, or wildlife viewing evoked the same behavioral pattern. The consequences are potentially negative. Animals that lack the traits to thrive nocturnally become vulnerable to non-human predators, affecting their chances at survival and reproduction. Scientists have already noticed some of these changes. Coyotes in California's Santa Cruz Mountains have begun hunting at night to avoid hikers, foregoing their usual daytime prey of squirrels and birds for nocturnal rats and rabbits. Though more research needs to be conducted on the topic, it's important for humans to be more mindful of how we're impacting animal habitats and aim for coexistence. The hunt is on. A years-long study has revealed how predators hunt in the African wild and what tactics their prey use to outmaneuver them. Researchers in Botswana fitted cheetahs, impalas, lions and zebras with custom radio collars to record each animal's location, speed, acceleration and deceleration and how quickly they can turn. Muscle biopsies taken from each animal revealed that predators were faster and more powerful than their prey but less able to maneuver at lower speeds. Computer models suggest that running at full speed is not in the prey's best interest since the predator can accelerate more quickly and take them down. Instead, prey should run at moderate speeds and turn sharply at the last minute in order to avoid capture. Lions and cheetahs were found to be successful in about a third of their hunts, generally when they're traveling just slightly faster than their prey. This is because the cats and their victims are co-evolving in order to maintain balance between each group's numbers in the wild. That study looks at how the brain maps things socially. Ever wonder how you know where others are while playing ball or just strolling? New research on bats may hold the answer. Researchers trained pairs of bats with one alpha male labeled as a teacher and the other as a student to retrieve food from a stand inside a room. They noted how students typically tracked the teacher's path toward the fruit. The bats were fitted with technology to record brain cell activity. Activity was normal in student bats acting on their own, but fired when tracking the position of the teacher. Researchers believe this was social play cells in the hippocampus. Student bats also tracked objects like balls and dice, but their brain activity responded differently. Researchers suspect this could provide insights into how the brain cognitively maps out one's environment socially and physically.